speaking about Firefly 3, uh, we do have that as our main topic of the podcast today. So I am going to go through that and the integration discussion, and then Jack's going to talk about the four-hour work week. So Firefly 3 here. Uh, we went over last episode the accounts, I believe it was, uh, for Firefly 3 and, and some of that uh, conceptually. I wanted to take it back and, and, and zoom out back into what this this service actually is, right? And what it looks like and how we interact with it and, and where we're going to be finding everything. So we're going to go over the application interface. I don't know how far I'm going to get. Um, we may need to make this a two-parter, uh, but we do have uh, plenty for us to cover. The first thing I'm going to go over here is what Firefly 3 looks like when we are first getting started. So the the, the first introductory page of Firefly 3 is very nice because it has a very simple welcome screen to get you started with the most basic of setups. So when you when you log into Firefly 3 for the very first time, uh, you're going to be prompted to put in you know a, a bank name of yours and a balance um, and an optional savings balance as well as the language that you want Firefly 3 to be presented in. So that is that is right off the rip uh, getting you off the ground running. Um, and so you're going to be you're going to be starting with what you currently have, and then going from there and and making your your budget as you go. Uh, there is also introduction guidance for all screens. So as you go through all these different screens, and and there's a lot we're going to be covering a lot of them today. As you go through them, uh, the introduction guidance will actually pop up. Like the first thing is just just pops up you know you can dismiss it but it will walk you through the details on that page um, you can always re-enable it because it's only the the first time but you can re-enable it uh, by hitting the the question mark button in the header and selecting the the re-enable introduction guidance uh, and that will give you it's basically tool tips but it's super nice because it will highlight exactly where what they're talking about is and walk you through what this page looks like where i should expect everything to be etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so that's been that's been super helpful uh, as i put these together today i have the dashboard uh, financial control and accounting pages to go through uh, so the dashboard itself, Firefly 3, is a PHP application, go figure, and it's it's very well put together, uh, it's it's very logical, it, it groups everything together, uh, and it, it ties everything together very, very well. For instance, there is an omnipresent header on all of the pages, uh, which gives you access to a couple of different things. Uh, you can uh, there you can go to the the home page um, you can open and close the side menu so the side menu will have all of these sub pages for you uh, you can access help for the current page um, it'll give you your user details as well as a create new stuff button and this is a really really cool idea because this is a I just want to put something in button uh, this will create Everything from withdrawals to deposits, transfers, new checking accounts, savings accounts, whatever. It will give you the ability to, oh, I just want to do this real quick, and it will give you ability to do that. Um, so that, that button's super handy, uh, especially for me, who, who tends to lose track of, of the 15 different threads I'm pulling on at the same time. And and allows me to, to get that immediately. The dashboard display itself, right, the, the, the very front page of Firefly 3 uh, is, uh, I, I say here, it's a pleasant mix of appropriate graphs, charts, and lists with buttons to go to the detail page view or to create entries where appropriate. Right. So it's a, it's a very good inner overview. Uh, across the top is actually a banner of several key statistics, uh, such as your balance, bills to pay, what you have left to spend, and your net worth. Um, this provides a good at-a-glance overview of your general financial health. All right, so, th so this front page is a, like I said, just a, a, a mix of ways to present things. Like uh, I, I especially like in his demo instance, he has a whole bunch of transactions like, uh, you know, get coffee in the morning and groceries and stuff. And you can see that list, that recent list, you know, of what was just uh, transacted uh, to the side. So that's, 
that makes a lot more sense than having like a bar graph or a, a, a pie right. graph or something right. like that. So right. um, these are these are very appropriate and, and um, you're able to kind of hone in on what you are there to do. And that will take you to the subsequent pages. Now, there are plenty of subsequent pages. Um, I'm just going to go over several of them today. Uh, namely the financial control section and the accounting section. Um, there is a final others section that has a lot uh, in there that either Jack, you know, or me, if I'm unlucky enough, will do next episode. <laughs> uh, the financial control, though, uh, it has I uh, three sections in it, and they all kind of have a, a similar feel to them. Um, but I'll go over them one at a time here. So the, the budgets page shows you an overview of your budgets, right? Top bar shows sure. the amount that's available to be budgeted. Uh, this can be customized for any period. Uh, the amount you've actually spent is shown in the bar right below that. So you got these two bars, what's total and what you've actually spent, right? So it's a very easy uh, visualizer of what your budget is looking like. Uh, below that are the expenses per budget and what you've budgeted for them. Right? Now in the documentation, I've linked to the concept page for the budget. So you can kind of go into what is that supposed to represent? What should I be looking at? How should I be thinking about this? Um, that may or may not be a, a segment that we go over uh, just because there are so many things to cover when it comes to personal finances we're gonna have to figure out how we want to group this together so it doesn't become you know 20 firefly 3 episodes right you know, we should right. we should be able to cover the basic concepts um, fairly quickly but they are linked here um for the budgets bills and piggy banks so for the bills the the next page uh, that page contains a listing of the bills that you've created along with all of the details, including links to the relevant rules and the recurrence period, among other things. Uh, clicking on individual bills will show a table with some general information about the bill. It also shows a chart of the transactions linked to the bill. Uh, there's uh, lastly also a button to rescan any old transactions uh, so they will be matched to the bill. Uh, so bills as a concept you know once again are, are um things that we're not necessarily going to go into right now but easiest way to conceptualize sure. them is uh expenses that we've identified as recurring on a stable basis right so these these bills we kind of know are going to be coming due and the way firefly 3 using their envelope method tracks them uh, is by putting them in this this bill section here, um, and those recurring are rent, utilities. Would you put? It's anything that's reoccurring. Yeah, it's anything right? that that's, it's that's basically okay. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, um, and and it's not just bills, but like if I know I'm getting groceries every single month, right? That could be something that I put under the bills, right? Yeah. Um, okay. There yeah. are. The, the way Firefly 3 does it is the way any envelope system would do it, right? It gives you envelopes and expects you to be able to categorize it appropriately, right? So it's up to you. And, and there's categories and there's tags and there's a lot of other concepts um, around how Firefly 3 expects to work as well as how it allows you to work. Um, so maybe that's a, a episode we want to do is to say, you know, what are the actual guardrails that it puts into place and what is in between those guardrails that you have the freedom, the wiggle room to, to play around in. To customize, yeah. yeah. Um, because they, they do include a lot, like the last one here, piggy banks, right? So piggy banks um, are, are just kind of like saving goals, right? So piggy banks uh, on the, the page there are shown in list form and are shown as they are grouped uh, if grouping is enabled uh, into their relative relevant groups note that the total of all the groups is not displayed if there are multiple groups that was something i noticed there uh, the ungrouped piggy banks are shown in their own separate ungrouped group which is okay 
how that works. Sure, on categories, basically. Yeah. Uh, the bottom of the page on also groups. displays a status of your accounts, which any of the piggy banks are saving on. So every piggy bank actually has an account that they're saving on or saving against, however you want to phrase that. Um, this is a field that's set when creating a new piggy bank. Um, you can also go in and edit the piggy bank to change the account that you want it to save on. Um, and then, at like I said, at the bottom of the page, it, any of the piggy banks that you're saving on will be displayed down there, the, the status of those. Uh, clicking on the name of the piggy bank will give you a graph of the events and a summary of the history and current status of the piggy bank. So, um, once again, you can drill down into the individual entries in the list. You know, I, I, I hate to say it's just a glorified way to display a database, but you know, it's that's what a lot of applications. That's are what anymore. a lot of apps are. But it's, I mean, it's it's very pretty. I will give it that. It, it is very yeah. pretty. Uh, and, and getting over to the accounting section here, it's so pretty that I really did not write a whole lot about the accounting section. Right? Okay. Um, there are two sections to accounting. Um, they look basically, well, they don't necessarily look the same, but they're, they're both uh, a, a listing page, right? Uh, so they're, they're both rows of all these, whether they're transactions or automation, right? So the transaction pages has, have a listing of the transaction for that particular type of transaction. Uh, as well, there are charts on the top for the categories, budgets, or source accounts, and destination accounts. So the, the transactions um, are actually split out into different classes. So you can have like assets, liabilities, expenses, uh, and a fourth one I forget right now, but but they all look basically the same. So like for all of those accounts, uh, you're gonna have that listing of the transactions. Whether it's an asset account, you're gonna see all the listings there. Expense account, uh, revenue account, and liability I guess are the four. Um, and then for the automation, uh, which is separate from the the transactions and and their accounts, the automation pages are a listing of all the automations available on the account. Uh, the rules are grouped according to the existing rule group. So you can actually group these rules into to rule groups. And I think that's definitely something we're going to have to pay attention to as far as like, how does automation work? Because a lot of people right. don't want to do that. You know, it's, and, and I'm not blaming them. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this every month. Sure. I'm right. not blaming I get them. It. Yeah. I, I would rather have computers do stuff for me too. In fact, I spend most of my day asking them to do stuff for me. So um, if they could do this, that'd be great. Uh, so, so diving into that, I think would be advantageous. Um, now, rules are grouped according to. Oh, I said that. Um, it also displays most of the details about the individual rules or recurring transactions in the table. Uh, now, going in and editing those, um, you'll see a list of all the available fields in there, as well as a list of trigger for the rules. Um, there are many details in the individual rules and recurring transaction entries um, that are worth explaining in depth, and I actually do call it out here, and I think we want to cover that in a, in a different concept uh, discussion here. Uh, so that is, that is the first, that, actually the majority of Firefly 3, right? So, I mean, what, what did we yeah. really go over? We, well, we have a dashboard uh, that Firefly 3 has. Of course. We have that. Um, we have the financial control, which is kind of the, the, the bigger concepts of so the budgets and the bills and the, the piggy banks and, and and the cool ways that you can tie assets together and transactions together, right? And then right. they have the section where you can actually drill down into those individual transactions, those those you know individual accounts, right? And then set up rules for those individual transactions and those individual accounts. Um, the other section is going to have a plethora of things, and uh, those will be touched on in a later episode. But this covers the major portion of how we can conceptualize how Firefly 3 shows us the, the uh, financial health uh, of, of our finances.